Good morning, everyone. As always, place your cross on first. No matter what you're going through in your life, put your cross on. You understand? It's so valuable to you. Am I saying you're not going to face opposition? Nope. Am I saying the devil ain't going to try to attack you? Nope. I'm saying God's going to be with you. That's the key element of being a Christian. You're going to face persecution. You're going to face tribulation. You're going to face trials. But that's where God comes into play. He's going to be with you at all times because you chose to be with him. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for giving me another chance to get it right, another chance to spread your word. Lord Jesus, I thank you for everything that you do for me. Thank you for all everything you do for the, those around me. I thank you for everything you do for your children. Lord Jesus, because without you, we would have nothing. We need you. Lord Jesus, I ask you to be with us throughout this day, to guide us with your righteous right hand, lead us on the path that you want us to go, protect us through the storms and the trials and tribulations and the darts of the evil one. Lord Jesus, I ask you to use me as you seem fit to bring forth whatever it is you want me to bring forth today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When I was praying right then, you know what came to my mind? Dreams. Dreams. Now, in the Bible, in Proverbs or Ecclesiastes, one thing I help to let you know about dreams. Sometimes they say dreams come from much worrying. First of all, you got to understand what worrying is. Worrying is not of God. God tells you not to worry about anything. You said the devil can get you worrying. It can feed over to your dreams. If he can get you stressing over this or that, it can feed over to your dreams. If he can plant thoughts into your head in the daytime, guess what? He can plant thoughts in your head in the night watches. You see, the devil is quite cunning. He'll make you believe lies one way or the other. And dreams is a good way the enemy uses to attack Christians all the time. Like I said, dreams come from much worrying. So you already know, if you're worried about an issue, if you're stressing over something, if the enemy is plaguing your mind with something in the daytime and it bleed over to your night watches, most likely it's not of God. You know, God doesn't want you to worry about this or worry about that. He said, sufficient today are the things thereof. He wants you to give all your worries to him. You understand this and that. You know, the enemy feeds off your fears. So it's kind of understanding that when you go to sleep, those same fears bleed into your dreams. So if the same fear that's plaguing your mind in the daytime is plaguing your mind in the night season, you already know that's not, that's not of God. God say, fear no man but him. You understand? Fear nobody but God. So first of all, he said, perfect love cast out fear, right? Perfect love cast out fear. So you got to understand, who wants you to fear? Who wants you to fear? Like I said, if the devil, the enemy can't get to you in the daytime, he's trying to get you to you in the night seasons. You understand? But you got to understand also, there are dreams that God visits you in too. You know, somebody asked me a question a few months ago. How do you feel about dreams? Well, I had to give them an answer. I said, if the Lord say test the spirits, you got to test the spirits in the daytime while you're walking. You got to test the spirits at night too. You understand? Like, when I was going through a lot of spiritual warfare when I first became a Christian, I always been a dreamer. Ever since I was young, I always felt like I had spiritual attack. I remember I used to be pent down in the bed and can't move. I always felt like something was around me. You understand? I always had this spiritual warfare going on. I didn't understand it when I was young, but I understand it even more so now. You know, like, I dream constantly throughout the night. My wife always tell me I'm always moaning or groaning or this or that. So I know sometimes I'm probably on a constant attack. I don't understand it. I wake up in the morning, I don't know what's going on. Like, some dreams I remember. Some I don't. You understand? But my wife right now, she faces a lot of spiritual attacks in a dream in a dream world. You ever uh, watch the movie, Freddy Krueger? Freddy Krueger is like a demon. And what did Freddy Krueger do? He attacked you in your dreams that it can kill you. 
He attacks you so much in your dreams. It can feel so real that it can kill you. Just think about it in a spiritual sense. The enemy can attack your mind so much in your dreams that it can bleed over when you're alive and it can kill you. Stress can kill you. Worrying can kill you. Dreams can kill you. But also dreams can heal you. You understand? If the Bible said take on the whole armor of God, you understand? I told you a little story last week when I was going through spiritual warfare. My wife was just praying for him. I couldn't pray. I was in the night watches and my wife prayed for me and I slept pretty good after that. But I was telling my cousin about the dream. And this wasn't even a dream. I wasn't even fully asleep. I just felt music being played in my head. But it's, I couldn't understand what it was. I could hear it. And my wife told me, she said, uh, do you hear that? I said, what do you hear? She just heard a voice. So at the same time, both of us are getting under attack from spiritual attacks at the same time. But she prayed and she prayed and it went away. You understand? But what am I getting at, people? I want you to be careful. I want you to stay prayed up. And the thing is, dreams can come from television, music, certain people you be around. You got to understand one thing about spiritual warfare. You remember the, the parable he talks about when the man, when the demon is, when the evil spirit is cast out of a man, then it goes goes around trying to find a place to inhabit and it comes back to that house. He was talking about binding the strong man. You understand? And he comes back to the house and then he takes him, then that man takes upon even more evil spirits in that same body. You see, the enemy is always after you. And the thing is, he can come in a, in a form of a familiar friend, a family friend, a family member, anything. And another thing about spiritual warfare, people got to also learn their Bibles. Now, it was a movie called Fallen with Denzel Washington. And this movie really talks about spiritual warfare. Like it was a man, he died, and that spirit left him. You know, and I was explaining to my wife, the man that was committing murder and all those things, it wasn't necessarily the man, but it was the demon inside him. He didn't let the demon take full control. You know, it's a movie, just, just bear with me. But that demon was after Denzel Washington. And Denzel Washington tried to come up with an idea how to cast the demon out. He's, he was like, okay, I got to get this demon all the way out. So he went to a secluded place where no people was around. And his whole goal was to kill himself in order to kill the demon. But in, by doing so, by killing himself, the demon still had a place to go. Guess where the demon went? Into a small creature, a small animal. Now, that sounds so far-fetched that a demon or an evil spirit can be cast into an animal, can inhabit an animal. And what happened? Go back to Legion, when Jesus cast out the demon into a herd of swine. You have to be very careful. So if you can do the math, even animals can be possessed by demons. You understand? Even animals, when, you, when your eyes open up to the spiritual warfare, you open up to everything known to man, things that you didn't realize before. You'll start looking at the Bible in a whole different perspective. You understand? Dreams, dreams, dreams. You understand? Jo Joseph had dreams too. But his dreams were not, you got to think about the dreams that Joseph had. It wasn't a bad dream. His brother felt that it was bad because they were bowing down to him. But it wasn't a bad dream. It was a good dream. You understand? Even Revelations. When John gives Revelations and he gets all these visions and things like that. You may think it's a bad dream because it says bad things. But it doesn't say bad things for those who try to live for God. It's good information for those who are living for God. You know, anything that God gives you is going to be good information. You know, this is why I, how I sum it up. You understand? Sometimes you have dreams. It's hard to interpret dreams. It's even hard for me. I always pray for God to try to give me dream interpretation. But it's hard to interpret dreams. It's hard. I sum it up like this. This is what I say. No matter what you dream about, if it's bad, pray about it. Pray for the people you see. Pray at it. 
You can't never go wrong with prayer. If you don't understand the dream, pray at it. If it's bringing you ill will, pray at it. If it's of God, it'll reveal itself. If it's not, you'll know because the devil is a liar. The things the devil shows you that don't come to pass, false. You see, people can have dreams and it turn out to be false interpretation, false prophecy. You got to understand something about false prophets or false or antichrist or anything like that. You got to understand who they work for. They work for the enemy. And they prophesy falsely. And most prophets have visions or thoughts that come to their head. And they prophesy those thoughts. You understand? Let's go back to the story I told over the weekend. If you, if you watched the video from this weekend when I was talking about false prophets and false prophecy. The Bible talks about if it doesn't come to pass, that's how you know if it's false. If it's a false prophet. So some of these people are having false dreams. And they are spreading these dreams to people. And they're false. They're not of God. You got to understand, if it's a false prophet, majority of everything that he's saying is false. Every word that comes out of his mouth is false. But in the, what I was talking about this weekend was 400 prophets versus one. And the 400 all had lying, a lying spirit. All of them had a lying spirit in them. They kept telling the king, hey, God's going to deliver this into your hands. You're going to win this fight. But that one prophet that was telling the truth, the king didn't like him. He was like, I don't like him. He always prophesied evil at me. But you got to understand, the word of God to somebody who's not truly a believer is evil to them. It's evil to them. He said that they, they refuse to come to God unless they be converted. So the word of God is going to be evil to people who don't want to live for God. You understand? Like, I've reached a point in my life, you're going to realize something. You're going to hear bad news. And you're going to have good news. You're going to hear about, you're going to get a phone call in the daytime. that somebody passed away, what can you do about it? You're going to hear things that you don't want to hear. You know, as a Christian, you got to take it all in consideration. You got to take it all in consideration. Let's remember what I'm saying. You got to take it all in consideration. But you got to be careful. You understand? Like I said, testing the spirits. That goes for when you sleep and when you're awake. You got a lot of lying spirits in this world. Some people lie to you face to face. You got to understand some people are liars. And the most people who are liars are under the sway of the evil one. You got to really think about it. It's a lot of things in this world that you have to be careful about. As a Christian, you can't listen to everybody. The Bible sums it up. Even if you have a problem with somebody, he said, bring it up with two or three witnesses. Even in the Bible, when it talks about somebody speaking in the Holy Ghost or speaking in tongues, that you need an interpreter. You understand? Two join together. He always talk about these certain things that you got to take heed to. He said, if somebody's speaking in tongues, somebody got to be there to interpret. Take that in consideration. Because I know there's a lot of churches out there. Well, the whole congregation be filled in tongues and no word is being spoken, no interpretation. No prophecy is getting interpreted. Prophecy. It's got to be two. It's got to be some kind of confirmation. God gives confirmation all the time. You understand? God gives confirmation all the time. The devil doesn't. The devil, I told you how the devil and the enemy works. He plants seed in your head and make you believe him. He make you believe anything. He's a liar. He's very convincing and cunning and trying to convince you of certain things. You understand? And he, he, if he can't get you in the daytime, I'm telling you, he's going to try to get you in the night seasons. You understand? If he can't get to you, he's going to try to get to your wife. If he can't get to my wife, he's going to try to get to me. Spiritual warfare is quite real. You understand? Does that mean that everybody who's under attack or who the enemy uses is bad? No. Let's take Peter. When Peter was talking to rebuke uh, Jesus, because he said he got to go away. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Then he rebuked Peter. You see, the enemy can jump into any people. It's worse words you say, how you talk, what you say. You got to realize something. Worldly talk, a lot of times, 
most times, 95% of the time, it's not of God. You understand? You have to remember this. And you got to think about worldly talk bleeds over until your night watches. Let's say you, that's why I tell people all the time, if you're not strong enough, you got to be careful. I always tell the story about the men being attacked by the demon and the de demon ripping them to shreds and leaving them running around naked. You know, I always talk about that story for a reason. Because if you're not strong enough, the enemy can attack you, no matter how good of a Christian you are. That's why I assert, like you got to understand something. Jesus showed you something that's true. When that demon, when that evil spirit leaves the body, it has to have somewhere to go. Meditate on that for a second. When it leaves that body, it has to have somewhere to go. Even when you pray for somebody, that demon has to have somewhere to go. That spiritual wickedness has to have somewhere to go. You ever watch old school exorcist movies or demonic movies or movies about spiritual warfare? And one of the priests, he might be like, hey, like I'm skilled in this now. You got to be careful. You give him rules. He's like, man, be careful. Don't engage him. Don't do this. Don't do that. Because he's a liar. He's going to bring all kind of accusations at you. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. He tell them the rookish that because he was like, I, basically, I've been there. I've done that. You got to be careful. And you finna jump into something that you've never seen before, that you've never been a part of before. And the enemy's going to try to attack you. So take that with a grain of salt. You understand? Take that to heart when you pray for folks if you're not spiritually strong enough that demon has to go somewhere hear me now let's say you go to a house that's full of adultery and fornication and all kinds of sore evils and you spiritual you're a Christian you believe in the power of prayer you believe in this and that but your armor is not all the way complete yet let's say you go to that house and all this spiritual wickedness is going on over there. And you're praying at this house. And you're praying and you're praying. And you, but you got a weakness in your armor. You're not strong enough. Guess where that demon is going to go? Guess where that spiritual energy is going to go? That's why the Bible is very specific about being not unequally yoked with non-believers. It's very specific about who you go to. You remember when he sent his disciples out? He said... If you go into a house and I be there, your peace will return to you. I mean, your peace, peace be on to you. But if not, your peace will return to you. You got to understand some things. Some house you go to, you're going to feel some type of way. You got to feel something there to let you know, hey, maybe I shouldn't be here. It's not a fear like that. It's like, hey. I might want to get ghosts out of here. Even the disciples, when they felt like they were about to be persecuted, they left and went to somewhere else and spread the word somewhere else. You understand? You have to be smart as a Christian. You can't go everywhere. You can't go everywhere. I can't go everywhere. If the Lord said he'll go before you, that's why he said if you go to this house and I'll be there. Your peace will be there and remain at that house. If not, leave the house. You see, spiritual wickedness has no respect to persons. If you're not strong enough, it has no respect to persons. You see, Paul, if you look at Paul, Paul was very strong in the faith, very strong in spiritual gifts. He could. Why do you think he wrote so many letters to other Christians and other believers telling them how to fight? You're going to face trials and tribulations. You're going to go through some things. You understand? But I can tell you one thing the Bible don't talk about much is dreams. It doesn't talk much on dreams. It doesn't. But I'm just telling you from personal experience. During my walk as a Christian. During my walk as a follower of Christ. That I constantly face spiritual attack. <coughs> I thought for sure. Once I became a Christian, I don't have to worry about none of that no more. I thought all that was just going to leave. But the enemy is after Christians. He's trying to distort you, your reality. You understand? He's trying to distort your reality. If he can get you to believe certain things in the night, 
it's going to bleed over into your day. Like I said, Freddy Krueger is a prime example of a demon that plagues your dreams. Do you hear me? There's spiritual warfare that happens in the night. You can watch many videos that talk about the Jezebel spirit or the succubus and all this that attacks you in the night watches. You understand? They got demons and spiritual energy for all things. The Bible talks about a lying spirit. The Jezebel spirit. All these things you have to worry about. Not really worry about fight against. That's why God wants your armor to be strong. He wants your armor to be strong. And if you're not strong enough, I'm going to tell you a secret. I'm going to tell you a secret that every Christian can go by. Some houses, it's best to spray, pray with from a distance. Do you hear me? Some homes are meant for you to pray from a distance. You got to understand something. If you're not strong enough, it's best for you to pray from a distance. Can I tell you a story about myself or something that happened years ago? I started, I just gave my life to God and I was facing hardcore spiritual attacks and I was like, I need to have somebody pray for my house. So I went to the preacher and I was like, could you come to my home and pray over my home? And the preacher said, I've never done that before. I first, I first, first thing, first thing came to my mind. I was like, "That's unheard of." A preacher that has never prayed for somebody's home. He said, "I've never done that before. I'm not really skilled on this." But at the same time, every Sunday, he anoint people here with oil and pray for these people, pray for the church people, first church members. But when it comes to coming to the house, he said he never done this before. He don't know anything about that. But I knew something spiritual was in my house. Something wicked was in my home. So I invited him in. He come to the house. He come to the door. And I saw the fear in his eyes. Let me tell you something. Even seasoned veterans don't even really know about spiritual attacks. So, but they still fearful. But anyway, he came to the house. He came to the house. This is a preacher over a congregation. That's why the Bible says a preacher shouldn't be a novice. You shouldn't be a novice. And a novice can be 60 years old. So he come there. And I was like, you want to walk through the house? No, I'm just going to stop right here and pray. But I saw the fear in his eyes. And it's the church leader that I came, brought into my house to help cleanse my house. You understand? I was like, wow. That kind of did something to me. You understand? Because I'm like, these are people that are skilled in the word that preach God's word. And teach God's word and tell God's people that everything's going to be okay. But then I bring him to my house and he has more fear than I have. It shocked me. I couldn't believe it. You understand? I couldn't believe it. You know what I start, started doing? I started trying to grow in the spirit myself through God, through God. Praying. Praying and praying and praying. And learning and learning and learning. And desiring spiritual gifts. You understand? Because I'm starting to realize sometimes... Some of the preachers and some of the people that pray for you ain't strong. I hate to say it. It is what it is. You understand? I ain't strong enough. You understand? Can I give you another story? This was a documentary I watched, and it was one preacher that was one priest that was skilled in the word. And there was one priest that was over a parish, and he was over a different, a bunch of different, uh, he was over a region. So he was like the head of a church region. And the, the man was interviewing him and asking him about exercise of demons. He's like, could you do that? He was like, no, I'm not skilled enough. So how can this man that's not skilled in the word be over, or not skilled in spiritual warfare be over a region of priest? I'm starting to realize some things. What is it all about? If you're afraid to cast out demons and you're afraid to fight the fight, why you why you're in it? Why you're into it? You see, I believe in everything the Bible says. I used to watch True Blood, a series back in the day, and they talked about all kinds of things. And they risked, they mentioned a word in there called a mani. I was like, what is that? So I'm reading my Bible one day, like some kind of wicked being. And I'm reading my Bible, and the Bible brings it up. 
I'm like, what? That's real? You see, if you're afraid of your enemy, if you don't want to believe that there's spiritual weakness and stuff out there, you got to lose. You hear me? You're going to lose the fight. If you don't believe the enemy can attack your mind in the night watch, you're going to lose. You got to know how to fight. You understand? And I'm learning. And I'm, I encourage you to learn too. I, I encourage you to test the spirits too. You see, my physical, my spiritual walk is different from your walk. I don't know what God has for you. But I know God didn't reveal all these things to me for nothing. That's why I talk about them so much. Why do you think I talk about sorcery and witchcraft so much? Why do you think I talk about angels and demons so much? My daughter told me years ago, she was about three years old. And she was like, she was scared. She was fearful. And she told me some spiritual things. She was like, in the night seasons, something come visit me and it scares me. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? What, how does it look? And she drew a picture. She was young. She had wings. It had black wings. I'm like, what? But I'm already open to the spiritual realm right now. So I'm believing everything my daughter tells me. And she said, I said, what did, it ask, what did, what did the, the two beings tell you to do? She said, they told me how to pray. So right then I knew that it was a spiritual being, that it was an angel of God. Because no angel, no demon finna tell you to pray. But she was fearful. Because she's a little kid. You understand? A little kid didn't ex expect that to happen. But it happened. It is what it is. And I believe her to this day. And I keep reminding her of that story. So when she gets older, she can spread it. You understand? There are angels that visit you at night watch. And one thing I've realized, kids are more spiritually in tune than adults. Kids are in a phase that they'll believe almost anything. That can be a good thing and a bad thing. But it's a good thing. Kids are more open to things. What's wrong with most Christians is they love the blessings. They love the fact that God can give you money. Or a new job and things like that. But they don't really want to talk about the spiritual realm. They don't. I watch a lot of anime. I watch a lot of anime. And you know what God tells me in my head? Learn. I'm like, what? This don't make any sense. What am I learning about? What am I learning about? But you know what a lot of Japanese cartoons talk about? Spiritual wickedness in high places. Angels and demons fighting a war in the spiritual realm. Angels on one side, demons on the other side. Spiritual warfare. It talks about it in great detail. And I'm like, that's crazy. How can the Japanese know all this about spiritual warfare? Then you come over here to America, they don't talk about it. The Bible tells us that while war is raging on in heaven, it tells us that the archangel Michael fought against Lucifer and they kicked him out of heaven. So we know it all the time there's something going on in the spiritual realm. It's a TV show called Bleach, an anime called Bleach, and it's, it shows angels and demons fighting against each other, but the world can't see it. Wow, that's crazy. But I believe it. Not because it's, a, it's intriguing to me. Because I know when I pray, God said he'll send his angels. Right? So if he's sending his angels, what is his angels to fight against? Demons. All the time. It's a war raging around all the time. Angels and demons are everywhere. And I'm not trying to give you this, tell you the fear. Because you know God's got your back. I told you it was in the, one of the books of the prophets when... One man was, was praying and praying and fasting and the angel said, I had to fight through troops to get to you. Wow. How did the Japanese figure this out? And America try to hide it. I don't understand. I don't understand. They even talk about dreams and things like that and it's crazy. A lot of things that you know when you start giving your life to God, you're going to know in so many different ways. You see, you got to learn to see God in everything. I don't care what you're watching. I'm going to tell you one thing, though. If you're not spiritually strong enough, you can't watch everything. 
I'm being real with you. I can't watch everything. One thing about me being a spiritual Christian, I love to learn. You understand? I love to learn. You understand? But my primary goal is to learn through the Bible. If the Bible talks about it, I want to know about it. I want to know how to fight it. I want to know how to fight against the enemy. You understand? In the dream world, in the physical world, in the spiritual world, I want to learn how to fight against the spiritual wickedness in high places. I want to learn how to fight. You see, I teach my wife, and a lot of things that she's going through right now, I've been through. And I see the fight I went through. I see her going through the exact same thing as a Christian. And I sometimes used to beat myself up like, man, did I bring this here? No. I can't bring nothing. One thing I know, the enemy is always after Christians. You understand? But watching her go through what she, watching her growth and seeing what she goes through just come from, confirms everything I went through as truth. Because she faces the same thing that I face. And she's growing so spiritual. I'm so proud of her. I really am. Because it's not for the faint of heart. And I know if God wouldn't never place her in my life to tell her about certain things, she wouldn't know it. You understand? So I tell her everything. When I first met my wife, let me pause for a second and continue on. <laughs> 